Welcome back to Rome Trotting. My name is Derek, this is Mike, and today we're gonna to revisit one of our most popular videos, which was called Why Danes Don't Like You. Except we're putting a little twist on it today, and we're talking about why Danes don't like you at work. Now that doesn't mean that Danes won't be receptive to working with foreigners, or that if you're doing business with a Dane, you're gonna have a difficult problem and a tough time. But what it does mean is that if you didn't grow up in Danish culture, or you haven't been living in Denmark for that long, there may be some things that working in Denmark and working with Danes, you'll need to know before you get started. Yeah, and the first reason we're gonna go through why Danes may not like you at work is if you aren't receptive to questions. Danish work culture is all about why, not how. And if you're leading a project or you're a team manager, this may be a little bit unsettling at first because it may seem like they're trying to undermine you, they're trying to question your authority. But the reality is that Danes feel like the way they can best express their contribution to the team, their contribution to the company, is by understanding kind of what's underlying between the request. They want to be able to go and to give everything they can, all their expertise and skill, and they feel they can best do that by asking questions, understanding why we have to do something, and not just being told what to do or how to do it. Yeah, and this is actually rooted in a lot of things in Denmark. Um, if you didn't go to school there, then you may not realize that from early on in Denmark, uh, Danes are really taught in a very kind of Socratic and question uh, question oriented classroom setting. So from the very beginning, um, in, in grade school, teachers are going to expect that they're questioned and that they're going to want to have a lot of questions from Danish students. So from the very beginning of their education all the way up through their employment, Danes are used to asking questions. And in some cultures, that may come off as uh, not trusting or may come off as uh, kind of doubting the expertise of the manager or the teacher or the person of authority, but not in Denmark. In this case, you need to be ready that people are gonna ask you questions and you should be willing to have an open dialogue with your team and your colleagues, especially if they're Danish. Now, another reason why Danes may not like you at work is if you skip lunch. Now, it may be common in the United States, for example, that you would eat lunch at your desk or something like that, but oh no, that would not be okay at all in Denmark. First of all, it would be considered a little bit unhygienic. You would be considered a little bit of a workaholic and it just wouldn't fit with the culture. But most importantly, lunchtime, especially in a Danish office or with a Danish team, is the time where you'll actually get to connect and socialize. And if you are working on a team, let's say you are on the marketing team, you will be expected to eat lunch and sit at a table with the people on your team. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have other friends at the company or maybe on occasion go and eat lunch with another team, but you should probably let your team know, oh yeah, today I'm gonna go eat lunch with, uh, with Rasmus who uh, works for a different team. That's perfectly fine, but again, lunch is the time where you're really able to socialize with your team. It's kind of structured into your day where you can have some time off and not talk about work or projects and really kind of separate yourself and have a little bonding time with those that you work with. Yeah, and one of the interesting things about lunch, especially in Denmark too, is that it kind of also expresses the flat hierarchy. And in the US, it's kind of the thing where you go to lunch with your coworkers, and it'd be kind of weird to go to lunch with your boss because it's kind of your chance to go talk maybe bad about your boss or manager or whatever else. But complain about work. <laughs> complain about work a little bit. Though lunch in Denmark tends to be much more flat. Even senior managers are expected to sit down and have lunch with the regular team. And sometimes the conversation may be about work if somebody senior is coming in, but generally it's not. It's more about what are you doing? What's your holiday plans? Where'd you come from? What are your kids up to? Maybe what home construction project you have going on. Always a good topic. And honestly, socializing is more than just lunch too. I mean, there's gonna be a few structured events that happen during the course of the year. It could be something very informal, such as maybe a Friday breakfast that goes on or making sure you bring cake in for everybody when it's your birthday. There's always gonna be maybe a, a summer fest where the nice summer party is going out and everyone's back from their holidays in August or also the infamous Eulafrokost as well. They're always key socialization events to go participate in. But there's a flip side of the socialization, which is also that you really shouldn't get too close to your colleagues. What I mean by that is that in Denmark, there isn't so much work-life balance as there is work and there's life and they're completely separate. And I know that that seems kind of crazy, but really, you shouldn't be offended if somebody doesn't want to come to your home or come to a barbecue that you're having or even meet you out for drinks after work because, like Mike said, people really do try to keep their work and their personal life and their social life separate. That doesn't mean that there aren't structured times to socialize with your team. And we've also worked at some international companies where there were a lot of people who didn't grow up in Denmark and maybe were looking for more friends to socialize with. 
after work and things like that and outside of work, those places do definitely exist. And if you work in one, that's great. And we're by no means saying that every Danish office and every Danish person is like this. We're just saying that this is something you should be a little cognizant of if you're starting to work in Denmark and maybe start getting a little too close a little too soon with your Danish colleagues. Now, another reason why Danes may not like you at work is if you don't blend in. And what I mean by that is that although Danes are very individualistic and you're not necessarily expected to fit in completely and match everybody in your office, Denmark is a high assimilation culture, which means that people are expected to kind of adapt and conform to the, the culture and kind of the Danish way of doing things, especially the culture of the office. So for example, in the United States, I had a former colleague who used to, even though we didn't need to wear a tie every day, his thing was he wore a tie all the time. And it came off as a little bit of like a brown nosing thing. And people would even ask him, especially new people, why do you wear a tie every day? And he would say, oh, well, you're supposed to dress for the job that you want. And it really kind of made him seem like he wasn't part of the team. People kind of got tired of his attitude. You know, it was fine that he was ambitious, but he was basically separating himself from everybody else. And this kind of thing would not go over well in Denmark, even to the point where that guy in the US that I used to work with, he would never have been in danger of getting fired or even talked to or admonished by uh, our manager or anybody else in our office. Like it was just something where we personally were like, he doesn't really fit in, he's separating himself from us that kind of thing could have bigger repercussions in Denmark and eventually might just say you're not a good culture fit. And the funny part with this is that like, it doesn't mean that you have to look the same as everybody else in the office. I mean, this is a culture where CEOs are covered in tattoos and you can find senior executives with pink hair or purple hair. So it doesn't mean that you have to wear the same exact dress code that everybody else is in. You can still be yourself, but it's more that you shouldn't kind of stand out from the crowd in that way. You shouldn't really draw attention to yourself. And this is also what kind of goes back to that first point too. If you're kind of new and trying to figure out how to get in, ask questions. This is a culture where people want you to ask questions, especially if you're foreign. Ask Danes about why they do something. They may not even know themselves, but they're really curious to get the question and really want to help you understand why you have to bring cake and what cake you should bring in for your birthday and why we do certain things and why it's important to you and why you don't take pictures of the Eula Frokost. You'll, you'll learn all of that if you ask the right questions. And that's part of fitting in. Again, you don't have to look the part, but you have to act the part. And that's the key part about being able to succeed and not have your colleagues hate you in a Danish office. Yeah, and whether it's the office or just living in Denmark at large, I think there's a lot of things that Danes may not even realize are kind of unique and even a little quirky uh, that other people may not pick up on. And they may not know that you don't know this. They don't even know that it's something kind of unique to their culture or their office. So ask those questions, make sure you're fitting in. And one of the funny things too, I'm just remembering that there's a couple times where I really realized that they do want you to fit in as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. There'd be times when I would sit down at a lunch table of all Danes that were speaking in Danish. I'd take an open chair and they would finish the sentence and then flip right into English to make me feel welcome because they wanted to make sure that I could fit in with them as well. So it is a two-way street. As long as you put some effort into it, you're going to feel effort back. And kind of related to the previous one, another reason why Danes won't like you in the workplace is if you brag. Now, this is a big one. I mean, we can all debate whether or not Jantelon is real, but you are no better than us as a core part of the Danish ethos. And that's important in the office as well. It's important to realize that you need to realize that you're part of a team no matter what you do. And it's really critical that you don't try to stand out above other people or standing on their shoulders or even worse, being perceived as standing on the shoulders of others. Yeah, Danes are, especially in a professional setting, will go out of their way to make a personal achievement seem like it was a team achievement. And that doesn't mean that there aren't situations where individual achievement is recognized, but often it's gonna be focused on the team and the organization as a whole. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have ambition or that you can't have pride or celebrate yourself, but the expectation that you work well with a team and that you're working for the team's success is really foundational in working in Denmark. Having a lone wolf kind of attitude is really gonna make you stand out in a negative way and it could even get you fired. Now, this one is kind of funny, but another reason why Danes may not like you 
at work is if you smell a little bit. And what I mean by that is if you're wearing a little too much cologne, perfume, aftershave, whatever it might be, this is actually one that we heard from a friend who let us in on the fact that uh, early on during his time at a new office, he was actually approached by a colleague and told, um, whatever you're wearing, it's a bit too strong and it's triggering me in a negative way. And um, this is actually a bit of a testament to the directness of Danes, because if you have a Danish person or a Danish colleague in a meeting room and they can't stand the smell of your cologne or perfume, they're definitely going to be direct enough and comfortable enough to let you know that. And the funny part is this fits in with a lot of Danish culture as well. I mean, it's the fact that we at one point brought back a scented Yankee candle from the U.S. and our friends would make fun of us for the fact that we had a scented candle. Like, why would you have a scented candle? Like, doesn't the normal white unscented candle work for you as well? It matches our white walls. It just This is kind of a cultural thing to get used to if you come from a culture where indoor smells are a big thing. Not in Denmark, something to stay away from. Now, another way that you can have Danes not like you in the workplace is if you try to tell them how to do their job. This is a fun one to see if you work in a multicultural, multinational company because there's a lot of other work cultures that tend to be maybe a little bit more directive or hierarchical or micromanagement. And that's not really something that happens in Denmark where people feel that they have a very individual obligation to do work in their own way. So that kind of telling how to do your job, it doesn't really work in Denmark. It really doesn't work in Denmark. Yes, and the irony of this is that in Denmark, you're basically expected to be a fierce individual while also being a cohesive member of the team. So it's really kind of seems like it's something that can't work or doesn't exist together until you kind of know what it's like and then you understand it completely. It's just kind of a thing that once you're in, you're in and you know it and you get it. Um, and that's a lot of things with Danish culture, I think, because in Denmark, a lot of the cultural traits and in Danish culture, most of those traits are the extreme. So when it comes to a spectrum of a cultural trait, Danes are usually the most or the least of these cultural traits and you'll find that a lot. And that's why coming from a country like the United States where there's a bit more diversity, um, there's so many different management styles, you kind of just learn to adapt. And most people sort of drift to the middle when it comes to our cultural traits because it's influenced by so many other cultures. But not in Denmark, things are generally one culture and you're expected to assimilate to it. So it can be a little bit tricky, but you'll be fine working in Denmark. And if you wanna know more about working in Denmark, you really need to watch this video right here where we tell you all of the good things and maybe some uh, interesting and fun surprises along the way about working life in Denmark. So this one right here, make sure you also follow us on TikTok and thanks for watching everybody. Hi hi. hi. hi.